good afternoon and welcome again to the Hanover Messe Hydrogen Fuel Cells Batteries Group Exhibit. My name is Robin and this afternoon I'll be speaking with Dr. Achim Schad, who's the Head of Department uh, Thermochemical Processes at Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. So we, let me just tell you first off the name of the topic today. It will be Power to Liquid. But first off, would you mind uh, telling us a bit uh, about what uh, the Fraunhofer Institute does? Yeah, um, I'm from Fraunhofer, as you said, and uh, Fraunhofer is a, the largest organization for applied research, and uh, it consists of uh, more than 60 institutes, and uh, I'm from Fraunhofer IESE, which is located in Freiburg, the southwest of Germany. Um, and it's, uh, it consists of more than uh, 1,000 people working at this institute. And uh, half of uh, this institute is uh, working on photovoltaics. And the other half, uh, half is uh, working on uh, other technologies dealing with renewable energies, such as hydrogen technologies. And that's why I'm here today. And uh, the idea is to, uh, to convert hydrogen uh, with carbon dioxide to produce uh, sustainable liquid fuels, and this is called as power to liquid. So it's um, condensed or it's liquefied electricity. That's that's the idea. It's a good catchy uh, title. Um, what are the uh, the main sectors that uh, the institute works with? So as I said, photovoltaics, uh, hydrogen technologies, and what gets more and more important is energy system analysis. So the idea is, or the question behind is, to to find the most cost-effective way to transfer the energy system from fossil-based uh, um, resources to renewable resources. And so we did uh, um, sis simulations on that and uh, to analyze what could be the best way to do it. Um, this is quite uh, time consuming, of course. Uh, we worked for that for several years on that, but we have now a feeling of uh, when, comes, uh, when, when comes what technology uh, into the market. And what we see is from these simulations that uh, electrolysis uh, is more and more important. And in the um, 20th of this century, we will see um, um, gigawatts uh, uh, performance of electrolysis in the, in the size of gigawatt in, in Germany. And this uh, come, so the question comes up what we could do with this uh, hydrogen. So for example, in the mobility sector. And the, the thing is to reduce the emissions of the CO2 emissions in the mobility sector. That's a really big issue, a big task. Uh, because we saw in the past there was not much uh, progress in that in that field, and we work on different technologies to uh, to remove both uh, the exhaust gas emissions but also the, the CO2 emissions. So we develop different technologies such as catwrap, where we uh, evaporate fuels and uh, tailoring the fuel properties in order to uh, improve the combustion properties. And the other thing is, is power to liquid. So to use carbon dioxide and hydrogen and to produce sustainable fuels uh, that can be used and not, not, uh, not just replace the, the fossil ones, but even to improve the, the combustion properties to have a really value added for, for the customer, for the, um, for the people who use the fuels and who, who work on it, such as that, we, that, the, that, that these fuels are not, not that poisonous uh, like the fuels we use today. And we think about methanol, for example, D DME and OMEs, oxymethylene ether, as potential future fuels which has this, uh, this better combustion properties. What are the, the main applications then? We, we see two applications, so uh, possibly three applications. Uh, First, uh, we could, of course, combust with, uh, with, uh, with fuels and uh, produce electricity and, um, and heat from it. But we don't see that that's a good solution. So we would like to focus on uh, the chemical sector to use this, uh, this fuels or chemicals in the, uh, in the chemical sector to replace the fossil-based fuels. And we want to, uh, to use these liquids as fuels. Uh, and in the fuel sector, and we have, the, we see the, the chance that we can reduce the exhaust gas after treatment systems, uh, because we have uh, oxygen introduced in the in the in these molecules uh, when you use, think about methanol and GME. So we have a better combustion compared to uh, diesel fuels or uh, gasoline fuels, uh, which are hydrocarbons and does not have any oxygen in it. Can you tell us about uh, your uh, your process of uh, development? 
Yeah, so speak to that. Yeah, it's much about methanol, as I said. Um, so currently, we work uh, in this in this project, Come to Chem, where we use um, or we want to use uh, steel uh, top gases from steelworks to produce um, chemicals such as methanol. So we develop a mini plant for the production of methanol from steelworks. That's built up currently. Uh, will be tested uh, until the end of the year, and then this plant will move to the Technikum, which is going to be built in Duisburg, and w which will be um, feed with uh, um, with real top gas from Steelworks from ThyssenKrupp. And the idea is really to test this process with real top gases that are cleaned. Of course, it's not uh, not just the, the Steelworks, not just the top gas from Steelworks. These gases have to be cleaned. That's done by Linde. They develop in, in parallel uh, technology to clean these top gases and which will be fed to this, uh, to this uh, mini plant, which is operated and developed by Fraunhofer Ise, and where we will produce in a continuous process methanol. So it's about one liter of methanol that we can produce per, per hour. And going back a little bit about uh, where you were talking about your system simulations, can you tell us a little bit more detail about it? And like, what, what comes after that? Why, why do it? Um, what, what we found out from these simulations is that uh, when we see, uh, when we have a look at the simulation, we see that uh, even in the um, in 2050, liquid fuels are needed. So it's not the case that you see that uh, just batteries and uh, this is enough. So then, uh, liquid fuels are needed and, and operate to, uh, for example, trucks or aviations or ships. You need this liquid fuels with a high energy density that um, that can be handled very easily. So this is a very important outcome of of the simulations. One of the main purposes. Uh, what is the point of, um, well, actually, I should go back to uh, what do you think are the challenges or what challenges do you encounter? Uh, the challenges are, of course, the costs, um, as, as always. So it's very hard to compete with fossil fuels uh, because the oil price is, is quite low at the moment and we have to really produce the hydrogen that we use for, for the synthesis. And uh, there are, but there are some some positive things we have to say. Uh, one thing is, of course, that the, the cost for uh, renewable energy, uh, electricity is rapidly going down. So uh, we see that we can produce uh, electricity from wind power or solar power very very efficiently, very cheap, and this helps to reduce the cost for this. Uh, fuels from, uh, from electricity, of course. And the other thing is that we see when we produce methanol that we uh, have a, a higher purity of methanol produced from CO2 compared to um, methanol produced from syngas, from fo fo fossil-based syngas. So, um, and the other thing is the integration. So um, when we do electrolysis, electrolysis, we produce also oxygen. So this oxygen could be used also in steel, in steel works, for example. So you have synergies when you think about the whole process. And this, uh, this is a challenge to find out the synergies and to go down with the costs, of course, for the whole system. And this, this is the thing we work on. And another thing is to have intermittent energy resources now. And um, up to now, the methanol synthesis is is running stable and um, at a stable load. There's no, there are no changes. Now we see we have uh, changes in the volume flow and, the, and, and in the gas composition. And this is something uh, that, that was no need to investigate before. So this is currently found out and investigated in this project, uh, such as Carbon to Chem. And so I asked you about challenges. So what are the, uh, on the flip side, what are the goals of it coming out? Um, the goals uh, that we found out is really to, um, to have this uh, sustainable fuel, to have uh, reduced um, emissions of CO2. So we, we do um, life cycle assessments and we, we find out uh, that uh, approximately up to 90% of uh, CO2 emissions can be reduced by power to liquid. So this is a really substantial number and this is very uh, very good result up to now and we will have um, a further look at that to uh, really to evaluate uh, these processes uh, um, for technological um, aspects, for economic and also by ecological um, considerations. You mentioned the uh, Carbon to Chem project, uh, just sort of lightly. Can you just give us a little bit more information about it? Yeah, so it's um, really the idea to, to use these top gases from steelworks, uh, but you have 
split different kinds of, of gases that comes out of a, of a steelwork. And the, the gas quality is quite different. So you have to really do the gas cleaning. You have to uh, mix the, the gases uh, accordingly as you need it for your synthesis. You can think about different uh, um, process change. You can um, convert to other chemicals such as DME or OMEs. So I have to think about the, the fluctuations of the gas streams. Um, the integration of electrolysis in such a steelworks, so there are a lot of things to, uh, that has to be investigated and this is done not only by just by us, we have a lot of other partners uh, such as ThyssenKrupp and Siemens and Clariant, um, Bayer, BASF and they are really Linde, helping us. Is Linde one of the uh, Linde was well? responsible for the gas cleaning exactly, so it's a lot about gas cleaning, yeah. that's, that's an important issue. And uh, so it's a project that will continue for several years because it's really a really difficult uh, task to do that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's really a very, very, very interesting uh, project. No, absolutely. Um, at, uh, what is uh, Fraunhofer's uh, Institute's main focus? As far as um, you have the Carbon to Chem uh, project, and then what other projects do you have coming up? Um, so we have other projects in this, in this field, uh, such as uh, high CO2. So it's a project together with the university, uh, University of Freiburg. It's a bit more basic research. So it's uh, more about the, the fundamental of, of catalysis, uh, how to uh, activate the, the carbon dioxide, which is a quite inert component. Uh, to find out what's the mechanism, the reaction mechanism, we, uh, how can we improve the, the, the activity of a catalyst to, to do the reaction, for example, at a lower temperature or to have a higher efficiency. Because if you go to a lower temperature, you have a better equilibrium condition. You can produce more methanol per pass, for example. So we, these are the aspects we, we are investigating with the, with the university. Yeah. And uh, we, we had a, a brief conversation before we came up on stage, and you were mentioning about uh, the, the topics that uh, you often discuss in your lab. There's a couple of topics that, if you don't mind sharing with, uh, with the, the group. One was your CADVAP, which you mentioned before, but if you could uh, go a bit into more detail as well. Yeah, this is uh, so. It's we work much about uh, we work much about fuels. So one thing is really to produce with synthetic synthetic fuels um, from CO2 and hydrogen, and the other thing is how can we um, maybe work on on hydrocarbons such as diesel and gasoline. And when you uh, usually want to um, introduce diesel in a in a in an engine, you have to uh, use a re really small nozzle, and it's really um, complex thing to uh, to mix uh, the fuel with with, uh, with the air. And our approach is to evaporate the fuel and um, and um, tune the, the properties of the fuel in order to enhance the, the mixing with the air and also to improve the combustion properties. Um, that, was, uh, that we have done and tested in an one cylinder engine. We found out we could reduce the emissions of, of soot and, and uh, NOx web, uh, um, significantly up to it's only, almost not, not uh, detectable anymore. And this is, of course, also very important for reducing the, the emissions in the mobility sector, not just the CO2 emissions, but also the exhaust gas emissions. So that was one of the topics, and the other one was uh, power to liquid. That's also a big topic in your lab. Yeah. That you, is there anything else that you'd like to add to that? Um, yeah, as I said, uh, the mini plant is uh, now going to, uh, to be uh, commissioned in the next weeks. Uh, so we will test this, uh, this mini plant to produce a methanol from, uh, from different uh, gas mixtures we want to use. And this, this um, mini plant will be moved to, uh, to ThyssenKrupp, the Technico that's going to, to be built. Um, uh, directly um, at, the, at the steelworks, and we will test the, the cleaned um, uh, top gas with, uh, uh, with our uh, mini plant system. We will produce this methanol, and it's demonstrated, and we will test how it works. And uh, that's uh, very, very challenging, and that will be done next year. Next year. And the other project that I wanted to ask you a bit more details about was uh, you have your high um, CO2 project. Yeah. What else can you tell us about that? You, you mentioned it a little bit before. Yeah, that's, uh, as I said, it's uh, about methanol, DME, and oxymethylene ether production, OMEs. So this is a, OMEs are a new um, fuel that's uh, going to be very interesting. It's made from methanol. It can be produced from methanol, but it's non-poisonous. It's uh, 
uh, it's a diesel fuel, so methanol would be a, a more ch a ch a challenge to replace gasoline, but uh, OMEs are, could be replaced diesel fuels. And non-toxic, non they can really uh, combust it very, very easily and can be mixed with diesel as well, can be also used as a pure, uh, a pure fuel. And they showed very uh, improved combustion properties uh, in order to uh, decrease the, the NOx and the soot uh, emissions. This was found out and tested at several test wicks at the TU München, for example, and this is uh, this is very interesting, but the thing is to, to find a, an efficient way, to an uh, efficient uh, synthesis path to produce this OMEs. And that's, uh, that's another issue that we, uh, that we will investigate in this high CO2 project to be, together with the university. And what is, uh, what is the, the outlook? Oh, I should ask actually at this moment, does anyone have any questions? Not yet? Oh, perfect. One second, please. Okay, Mr. Schad from, from, from your company, uh, what is the timeline for the synthetic fuels? I'm from automotive and uh, um, I have to guess uh, whether it's interesting in challenge uh, to batteries or uh, whether it's afterwards or whether it's uh, at the same time. Um, what, what is your timeline in, in your business? Um, so the thing is, uh, with methanol, they are Mm, there are pilot plants uh, in operation. When you think about Iceland, there's one pilot plant producing methanol, I think several thousand tons per year. So this methanol is, uh, is in the market anywhere. Um, but of course, um, the, the thing is would be to increase the production of, of methanol. But methanol is produced in million tons per year, but it's uh, used in the chemical market and, and also in the fuel market. So this is something that, that is still available. You can use this methanol. It's more, of course, it's, it's uh, black methanol, if you would say. It's from fossil-based sources. But you, the question is to, um, to decrease uh, the CO2 emissions to introduce the methanol as a green methanol. And this is the task we are working on. Um, so we, we see that now this, this started, uh, this production of methanol, the, the green methanol, on a small scale. Uh, but we see that in the next couple of years, we will see more and more pilot plants producing this amount of uh, several thousand tons per year that will spread in the different countries, especially where there is cheap electricity. You can think about Norway or Denmark or Iceland or in the more southern countries where there is cheap uh, um, electricity from the sun. Um, so this, this small... Um, small plants will be built very soon. That's, that's my impression when you think about methanol. Thank you very much. We'll just have uh, time for one more question. Uh, when you talk about power to liquids um, and burn it in a combustion engine uh, with an efficiency of less than 30%, is it a smart way? Sometimes you cannot avoid using liquid fuels. So of course you, you will electrify whatever it is possible and useful and um, affordable, of course. But several applications you cannot electrify when, when you think of aircraft and ships. So there is a need to have liquid fuels. And uh, for these applications you need liquid fuels. And, and if you think about big ships and trucks, big engines, the efficiency is not that bad. It's bigger than 40%. But if you think about small cars, for example, the efficiency is very bad. That's, that's true. So in the end, it is really to, to use um, CO2 from, from biomass, from this uh, steelworks processes you cannot avoid, and to, to use green electricity, and then you save CO2 emissions. And then it's really useful to do it and to use it. Okay. So you, you should do the one thing, but should not do the other thing. That's, that's of course, the, the challenge. Thank you very much. So thank you so much. I want to uh, please join me uh, in thanking Dr. Achim Schad, uh, Head of Department uh, Thermochemical Process at the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy S Systems. And uh, their booth is uh, number E65-1, so it's just basically down the hall. Please stop by, and uh, if you have any further questions, please stop by to the doctor. Anything else? I would be happy to, uh, to, uh, put, uh, uh, to uh, meet you at, at our booth and to talk about that and have a coffee. Perfect. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you.
So now I have uh, my colleague Brian is coming up and uh, he will be joined by Nathan Cooley who is the Director of Chemicals, uh, sorry, Director of Commercial Sales at Fuel Cell Materials and their topic is understanding the total cost of ownership of hydrogen sen um, sensors in fuel cell applications. Thank you very much.